this weekend. Everything went really well. We were blessed with good weather when we needed it and an A-frame when, we, uh, when, it, didn't, when it wasn't nice. Um, so that all went well. We had a uh, good time to meet people, uh, get to know them better, some good food. So it was all really good. Uh, good singing. Um, and now we're going to transition over to the Sunday school or Sunday service followed by the Sunday school picnic to follow. Does it have to be closer? Okay, um, so we had hoped to have an ordination today, an ordination service. I even had the hat on order. No, I'm kidding. Um, but our speaker tested positive when he was getting on the plane, so uh, he's not here. So we're not having the ordination service. Um, that's going to be rescheduled for another time. Um, but you can still feel free to call Jared Reverend. He's actually asked that. We call him Reverend, especially today. Uh, thankfully, Scott Anderson was able to fill in on short notice. Thank you, Scott. Be hearing from you soon. Um, after the service, there's going to be some free time because lunch is going to be around 12:30, but it's going to be when it's ready, okay? Because uh, we usually would be barbecuing right now, but we're going to just wait, and so everyone can enjoy the service. So it'll be ready, so listen for the gong, or the horn, I guess, and then uh, that'll be lunchtime. After that, there'll be the games. The only, uh, there's a couple different rules, but the big one is that any kids that are under 18 cannot be unattended at the waterfront, okay? There's nobody down there watching. And I do need a couple volunteers to clean up the lunch dishes, three of them. I'm not seeing any hands. I'm still looking. I see three. I see four. Is your hand up? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We got paper plates, paper cups, plastic cutlery. We didn't do that for uh, camp, but we did that for this. So it's going to be easier. Okay. So Denise, was your hand up, or was it just no, no? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. My last announcement is youth and men's breakfast will be back on this week. So, and they are both kind of wrapping up. I think a couple weeks for youth. This Friday will be the last youth. 
Okay. Two more men's breakfast. Yeah. Okay. Are there any announcements that I'm missing? No children's church today or from now on? Just today. No children's church. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Scripture reading today is Psalm 95, 1 to 7. Unless Scott waves me off. That's good? Okay. I'm used to having a full platform up here to work with. Psalm 95, 1 to 7. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock. Of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the, ki the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture the flock under his care. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you for the good weather you gave, it, gave us this entire weekend. When we needed it, we had sunshine. We just thank you, Lord, for that. As we're here at the camp and we look out the window, we see the mountains, we see the lake, we see everything is green. And we are just reminded of your majesty, your creation, Lord, that you put so much care and attention into. And we're thankful, Lord, that we are your flock, that you are our shepherd, that we are under your care. That no matter what we are going through, if we are feeling depressed or if we are feeling anxiety or feeling out of sorts, as many of us are these days, that we can come to you with our burdens, Lord. We can give them to you, and you give us your peace. We thank you, Lord, for that. Lord, we thank you for Scott Anderson. We trust that we are going to hear your word from him, and we ask that you would give him the words that you want us to hear. And Lord, we thank you for the abundance that you give each of us. And as we do the offering in a few songs from now, we just ask that uh, you would bless that money to your to uh, your needs here on this earth, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would bless this time today. We thank you for all that you do. And we just, uh, we just thank you, Lord. Amen. Your love is amazing, stay and changing. Your love is a mountain, beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, I attend. It's surprising, I can feel you rising, all the joy that's growing deep inside of me. Every time I see it, all your good shines through, I can feel this out of time, that's a lovely Hallelujah, 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 the Lord of makes me Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Your love is surprising. Your love is surprising. I can feel you rising. All the joy that's growing inside of me. Every time I see it, all your goodness shines through. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
This is my story. This is my song. Praise my Savior. All the days This is my song. song we're going to pass the offering baskets around I lift my eyes up to the mountains where does my help come from my help comes from you maker of Sort of thought we were doing something else today, but 
thankfully, things could work out that I could be here because uh, there's no place I'd rather be. So, um, to start off with this morning, I came here with a question. And the question is a personal one that you don't have to answer out loud. If you want to, you can. But the question is, are you paying attention in the valley? Are you paying attention in the valley? Uh, and before we talk directly about that, happy Father's Day. Um, Father's Day is a really good day. I was reminded this week by someone at the office. They said, well, actually, every day is Father's Day. At least it should be. I thought, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, there, I mentioned it. Uh, as a father, something that I learned early on and something that my dad learned early on in parenting, because I remember him talking to me about things, is that kids don't actually hear with their ears. They actually hear with their eyes. Which is why, if you want your child not only to hear you, but to listen to what you're saying, you got to have their eyes. Because for some, the eyes and the ears seem to be connected when it comes to listening. And I remember dad always doing that, making sure that we were doing this, that there was a focus happening. He was, he, he was making sure that I was paying attention to what, he, to what he was saying by making sure that he had my focus. And uh, we all have a focus. It's just, is it the right focus? And I mentioned this last time I spoke, but have you noticed that the world is heating up? Have you noticed that? Don't mean temperature. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's heating up politically. It's heating up economically. It's heating up socially. It's heating up. So all of us are in the world right now, and it's heating up. Now, that's what's happening sort of corporately. But then there's, there's personal stuff that's always happening. Uh, people are dealing with loss in the areas of work, of education, of health, relationships. So collectively right now, we're going through this really big thing. But then personally, on top of that, we all have these other things going on. And so I would say it's pretty safe to say that currently we're in a bit of a low spot. Uh, a bit of a collective depression, a rough patch. We are in a valley. And because of the times, we're all there together. Now, when you think of going through a valley, I mean, it's never like, Lord, could you just send another valley? That'd be fun. Uh, it's not really, not really how we look at it. My daughter was given this, this book this week, and it's entitled The Valley of Vision. Now, normally that's not how I view valleys, but, but, in the, but in this book here, this collection of poems and prayers, refers to the valley of vision. And, and these poems and prayers are a collection of poems and prayers from the Puritans. And the Puritans were a group of people, kind of 16th, 17th century, but they also include Spurgeon as being a Puritan, even though he's like 1834 to 92. But they include him as well. And what the Puritans were known for is having their focus on prayer and meditation. And that meditation was on the Word of God. That was their focus. And so the title of this book is The Valley of Vision. Now again, the way I tend to respond to the valleys in my life is I ask God for perseverance so that the, the valley season will be over. I want to be done with that. I want to do maybe another mountaintop thing, you know, something. can Just help me persevere, help me get through the valley. But in this book, basically what they're all arguing together is that the valley is not a place to get through, but it's a place of opportunity. Now, if you're in a deep valley right now, a very personal deep valley, you're like, opportunity for what? I just want this done. 
But it is. It's an opportunity for growth, for intimacy with God, for maturity. One of my favorite passages I share it a lot is in James chapter 1, it starts off with consider. Consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. So our valleys, as adopted children of light, can be valleys of vision. So here is how this book opens. The Valley of Vision. Lord, high and holy, meek and lowly, Thou hast brought me to the valley of vision, where I live in the depths, but see Thee in the heights. Hemmed in by mountains, of sin, I behold thy glory. Let me learn by paradox that the way down is the way up, that to be low is to be high, that the broken heart is the healed heart, that the contrite spirit is the rejoicing spirit, that the repenting soul is the victorious soul, that to have nothing is to possess all, that to bear the cross is to wear the crown. And to give is to receive. That the valley is the place of vision. Lord, in the daytime, stars can be seen from deepest wells. And the deeper the wells, the brighter thy stars shine. Let me find thy light in my darkness, thy life in my death, thy joy in my sorrow, thy grace in my sin. Thy riches in my poverty, thy glory in my valley. A new perspective, a different perspective to walking through the valleys of life. Lord, I just pray this morning that as we look into your word, that you administer to our hearts. Lord, I pray that um, the things that we worry about, the things that we carry, Lord, that we would choose to, by the power of the Spirit, lay these things at your feet, surrender them to you, clinging to faith, knowing that you are faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. So Isaiah, we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 48. That's our main text this morning, starting in verse 17. So Isaiah 48 starting in verse 17. This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. How do we know what is best? How do we know where to go? This is Father's Day, and God's design for fathers is that we would be a picture of God the Father to our children. That's a fairly high calling. (laughs) It's one that I fail at, uh, definitely weekly, but probably daily. But that's God's plan for me as a father, that I would explain to my kids, show my kids what is best, that I would direct my kids in the way they should go, And that I would also direct them in the way they should not go. Now that type of fathering, that type of parenting, is not encouraged in our world. The worldly parenting that we're exposed to now is this. You are to help your children help facilitate the discovery of their own truth. You are to support them in their journey. You are to affirm whatever identity they choose. That's what a good Canadian parent does. That's what we're told in the media. Now that may sound good at the onset. It might sound caring. It might allow people to feel good for a time. But the reality is, is what... What the teacher becomes 
is not the parent. The teacher becomes experience. Your experience becomes your truth. And in fact, the whole idea of absolute truth is right out the window. No absolute truth. That's the path of worldly parenting. God's idea much different. As parents, just like God teaches us what is best, He directs us in the way we should go. That's what we're to do as parents. There's a huge contrast uh, and an ever-growing striking contrast between how we parent as children of light and how we parent from a worldly perspective. Verse 18, and this is what I would say is the key verse today, because remember the question is, are you paying attention in the valley? Verse 18, if only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your righteousness like the waves of the sea. We're in the valley, and God's telling us, Scott, if only you had paid attention to my commands. Have you ever not paid attention? Have you ever been asleep at the wheel? I was working 14-hour days one time logging, and uh, about halfway to Hazleton from Witset at about 110 kilometers an hour, I apparently was asleep for quite some time, and I hit the, the side of the road, and all of a sudden I'm fishtailing on dry pavement at about 90 when I woke up. And somehow, by some miracle, because the truck was going everywhere, God sort of placed the truck on the edge of the road. My boss at the time looked at me and said, maybe it's my turn to drive. <laughs> I completely w fell asleep at the wheel, not paying attention. And this morning as a father, I again failed to pay attention when something happened in my, on my property. Our cow and our 20 sheep ended up in a pen that they're not supposed to be in, which to you is like, big deal, it's a cow and it's a sheep. But when you're like trying to do the thing and then you get all worked up and then pretty soon everyone, it's everyone's fault. And in that moment, rather than paying attention, rather than remembering every day is Father's Day, I'm gonna focus on him, I got distracted by a cow and some sheep not being in the right place. And I got all frustrated. And then I had to spend about 20 minutes on the drive here. We're all like apologizing to each other in the car, which is really sweet, but it didn't have to happen if only I had been paying attention. So it's very easy to get distracted. But when we pay attention, we have peace like a river. We sing that song, I've got peace like a river I've got. And we repeat it. And we've got that down in our soul. According to this verse, why do we have peace like a river? We have peace like a river because we pay attention to His commands. That's where peace comes from. And it's easy, it's easy to get distracted. It's easy to forget that. But I want to live in that state of having peace like a river, irregardless of my circumstances. When I think of peace like a river, I think of things like, like, like abundance, like dependable. The river's always flowing. It's refreshing. It's life-giving. Then it's like this righteousness, like waves of the sea, these powerful, consistent, unending waves. Wouldn't that be an amazing way to live? And we can live that, surrendered to Him. So, so again, though, the world says, when it comes to paying attention, we need to pay attention to our own lives, to our own experiences. Pay attention to our feelings. Pay attention to the media. Pay attention to our peers. Whatever benefits me. But God says, no, no. If you want peace like a river, if you want righteousness like the waves of the sea... Pay attention to my commands, to my word, to the Bible. Pay attention. Verse 
19. Your descendants would have been like the sand, your children like its numberless grains. Their name would never be cut off nor destroyed from before me. So when we receive as his children the teaching that is best for us, are directed in the way we should go, then we experience peace like a river, righteousness like the waves of the sea. And then what happens as a result of that is we plant peace and righteousness in the generations that follow. Happy Father's Day. That's, that's your goal. You want to be planting peace and righteousness in the generations that follow. Fathers, mothers, that's our role. Not only to proclaim how to do it, but also to live it and be a living example of what it is to walk in the light. And in that process, realizing that God doesn't have a cutoff on grace for you as a dad. Did you, is it working still? Really want to make sure you get the grace part. So God, God, God does not have a limit on the grace for you. Which is important because otherwise, this morning with, it, with as upset as I got at the cow and the sheep and whose fault it was and all that, I'm like, I get in the car, I'm like, what in the world am I doing in this car going to Houston to talk to people about, to, talk, to preach to people at a family camp? Look at me. I'm a mess. But by the grace of God, I can do that because His grace is enough. And, and when we truly understand His grace is enough, we don't abuse that. Goodness, no. We're thankful for it. And so here I am despite losing it over a cow and sheep. It's amazing. Verse 20. There's a command here. Leave Babylon. Flee from the Babylonians. Announce this with shouts of joy and proclaim it. Send it out to the ends of the earth. The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. So verse 20. Again. Are you not paying attention in the valley? Is there... I think truth is, in some area of your life, you're probably not paying attention. Or maybe I'm just alone on this. But anyway, I'm believing I'm not the only guy in that boat. Are you not paying attention in the valley? What do we do when we realize we're not paying attention? This verse says, leave, flee Babylon. What is Babylon? Babylon represents our fleshly desires. It's all about me. Leaving our fleshly desires, fleeing from the values of this world, leaving the thinking that we are so encouraged to have that makes the world all about me. We're to leave and to flee. We're to set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. My dad preached in Kaya on this last week, Colossians 3 verse 2. Set our mind on things above, not on earthly things. Sounds so simple because it is. It's just like many simple things in God's word. It's not easy. And so when we're realizing this, when, when we leave, when we flee, we are to announce this with shouts of joy and to proclaim it. So what's the it? The thing we're meant to proclaim is the Lord has redeemed His servant Jacob. That's what I'm telling you this morning. The cow and sheep thing. I'm saying to you, the Lord has redeemed His servant Scott Anderson. Despite all the times that he behaves like an idiot. He's redeemed me. That's great news. Because if He can redeem some sorry fool like me, there's also hope for you. And that's, that's the good news this morning I want to bring to you at family camp. So our lives do this. Our lives proclaim that the Lord has redeemed us when we obey, when we focus, when we meditate on His commands, when we submit to His Word, our lives do that. It's not something... I'm going to be a light today. I'm going to do this. No, no. You're going to submit and you're going to be that. It's two different things. 
Verse 21. They, the Israelites, did not thirst when he led them through the deserts. He made water flow for them from the rock. He split the rock and water gushed out. Remember that story, you know, the Israelites need water because you need to drink, you need to be hydrated, can't find any, so God brings it forth out of a rock. And you and I, we need water also, but we need, we need living water. We need living water. In John chapter 4, remember Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman at the well and he kind of knows her past and all that stuff. And when they cut through all that garbage, he says this, everyone who drinks this water, pointing in the well, will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. That's the water that we have access to in the valley, the peace like a river, the waves of the ocean. We, we have this living water that we have access to irregardless of our situation or what's going on around us. And then in verse 22, it ends with this. There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. See how he throws that in there? Here's your option. You can repent, you can be redeemed, you can, you can come sit on my feet, you can focus on my commands, I can tell you which way to go, what to do, or you can have no, no peace along with the wicked. There's a little bumper sticker, the no God, no peace, no God, no peace. Have you ever seen that bumper sticker? It, it goes N-O, God, so no God, there's no peace, N-O. Then right underneath that it says K-N-O-W, no God, and then you know peace here and here. It's a beautiful bump bumper sticker. They remind me of that. So again, the question, are you paying attention in the valley? Or are you asleep at the wheel? Where's your focus right now? Are you focused on the flesh, the things that are all about you, the worries that you have, the fears that you have? You have an option. You can focus on something else. By the power of the Spirit, you can focus on something else. He's promised to give us a sound mind. So the other thing we can focus on is His Word, His faithfulness, prayer, meditation, also gratitude, being thankful. I've, I've been trying to get better at this, that when I'm grumpy, I try to think of the things that I'm thankful for. And when I sincerely start listing the things that I'm thankful for, in my mind, it's hard for grumpiness and that to be in the same space. Maybe it's because I have a very simple brain. I don't know. But it's been phenomenal to practice the discipline of gratitude. Okay, so, so here we are. Maybe we're realizing we're not paying attention. Maybe we're a bit asleep at the wheel. What now? What now? Well, the first thing is getting to that realization. So here, here's a verse of a hymn. Please sing it with me if you know it. Okay? It's really hard for you to start. Okay. Hmm. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts of praise. Wow. That was awesome. Prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Prone to not paying attention. Prone to being asleep at the wheel. That's. But Lord, again, even though that's where I'm at, here's my heart. Take it again. Seal it. Seal it for what? For what purpose? So that I may praise you. Bring you glory. So we're wanting to pay attention. We're wanting to change our focus. Lord, so when God tells us in his word in Isaiah, remember, he just told us, I am the Lord your God who teaches you 
what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. We can, we can receive that. Now, page 64 in this book here that Michaela was given this week. The title of this prayer slash poem is The Awakened Sinner. Oh, my forgetful soul. That's a good opening line. I, I, was, I was totally caught on it when I saw that. Oh, my forgetful soul, awake from thy wandering dream. Turn from chasing vanities. Look inward, forward, upward. View thyself. Re- reflect upon thyself. Who and what thou art. Why here? Why thou must be? Be, must soon be. Thou art a creature of God, formed and furnished by Him, lodged in a body like a shepherd in His tent. Dost thou not desire to know God's ways? O oh God, thou injured, neglected, provoked benefactor, when I think upon thy greatness and thy goodness, I am ashamed at my insensibility. I blush to lift up my face, for I have foolishly erred. Shall I go on neglecting thee when every one of thy rational creatures should love thee and take every care to please thee? I confess that thou hast not been in all my thoughts, that the knowledge of thyself as the end of my being has been strangely overlooked, that I have never seriously considered my heart need. But although my mind is perplexed and divided, my nature perverse, yet my secret dispositions still desire thee. Let me not delay to come to thee. Break the fatal enchantment that binds my evil affections. And bring me to a happy mind that rests in thee. For thou hast made me and canst not forget me. Let thy spirit teach me the vital lessons of Christ. For I am slow to learn. And hear thou my broken cries. So now we're shifting to Psalm 61. And our focus now is the awakened sinner. That's me, and hopefully that's you. You're a redeemed child of God. So Psalm 61, verses 1 to 3. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I remember a time, I was remembering yesterday as I was preparing for this, a time when I went mountain goat hunting with my dad. And I was about 10 years old. And I still don't know how this happened, but I think I know why it happened. We're up on a, on, on a mountain overlooking Morristown, and we're up at the peak, and I, I still don't know how it happened, because like I'm 10 would my dad just let me wander or like around him? No. Anyway, we're done the day. We're going to go down the mountain. So somehow I get separated from my dad. I still don't understand how that happened. Although this is a very interesting fact. When you look up the definition of the name Scott, it's wanderer. <laughs> why, why did they name me that? But anyway, so the little wanderer starts wandering. And I'm looking over Morristown, I'm going down through like, and I'm very short, so it was very odd for me to be taller than the trees. <laughs> but I was, so I'm like, this is amazing. And I'm, what's over that hill? And I'm going and going. And then all of a sudden, I realize that uh, I am alone on a mountain. And the day is coming to a close, and I... I, I don't have anything to build a fire. I don't have food. Dad's carrying the sleeping bags. Well, ah, it's going to get dark. I was, I was and can currently be petrified of the dark. So anyway, all is lost. 
So my thought is, Dad must have gone down without me. So in the panic, I start running downhill. Now, mountains are shaped like a cone. So if, if, if someone's ahead of you and you're going up the mountain, no problem. They run as fast as you want, you'll see them at the top. If they're going down the mountain, you're not going to find them. It's not going to happen. So I'm in a panic. And for a brief second, I stop. Just for a second. And I stop, and I'm crying, and I'm listening. For the first time in this whole disaster, I'm listening. And I hear a loud powerful but faint voice, Scott. I hear that. And I know that that is the voice of my father. All of a sudden, I'm filled with hope. And even though I'm not in his presence, I just heard his voice. So I have hope and I have peace. All is not lost. I'm not spending the night alone a grizzly bear is not going to eat me. I am fine. So then I start running where? Towards the voice of my father. That's why God had that happen. So that I would never forget that experience. And so then, as I go up the mountain... I'm yelling, he's yelling, I'm very happy. I, th I think he was happy. <laughs> it's like, where did you go? But, but anyway, we sort of meet and there's a big hug thing that happens and the tears stop for me and, and I'm filled with peace, totally relieved. I'm with my dad. So when I read this, hear my cry Oh God, listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That's what, that, that's what I envision when I read that. Because that's what happened. I grew faint. I was in a panic. I'd lost focus. I started listening. And all of a sudden, there it was. Verse 3, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. And I, I love remembering that feeling of being reunited with my dad after thinking everything was lost. And I shared with you in the last sermon I was here, I shared with you a time at the Easter Seal House when our family was reunited after my brother had been diagnosed with cancer. And physically, they were down in Vancouver and my little brother and I were up here. And we're there in the Easter Seal house. It's the first time that we've seen Jason with no hair and do, going through chemotherapy and all that. And then I'm in the room with my dad, my little brother, and me. And I'm 13. My little brother, I guess he's like six or five. And dad's desire was to be godly, to be led of the Spirit. So in that moment, he chose to read to me and Matthew Psalm 86. And the only verse I remember is this one. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths of the grave. What a great encouragement. Here we are in the valley. Maybe you've lost focus. Maybe you've been asleep at the wheel. Great is his love towards us. He has delivered us from the depths of the grave. And he's faithful to do it again. Verse 4. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. You know, that's, that's our longing as a child of light, to take refuge in the shelter of his wings. And it's His will that you would cry out for that. That you would actually cry out for that desire. Because one, one person might say, you know, I know I should have that longing, I know I should have that desire, but, and I know I'm asleep at the wheel, you know, I just, I'm not super worked up about it, I wish it was a little different, you know, but I just, it's not really authentic for me to ask for that desire, that longing, because I don't really feel like it. I don't really feel like it. 
Well, one of the things I'm thankful for as a child of God is it doesn't matter how I feel because my feelings don't change the truth. And so as a child of God, I don't have to be led by my feelings. In fact, it's very different. For a child of light, we're led by the Spirit. We're led by truth. And if we want to know truth, we must know His Word. So if that's you this morning, if it's like, well, I know I should have those desires, but I don't really, it's not just not where I'm at. Well, ask for it. It's His will that you would have that. If, if you ask for His will in, in, in your life, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Verse 5. For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. So I am very blessed. The three generations ahead of me, as far as my relatives, aunts and uncles, grandma and grandpas, with a few exceptions, I know without a doubt I'm going to see them all in heaven. And that, that's a pretty awesome blessing to have seen all these people pass and to know that I'm going to be with them for eternity. Not everybody has that. Everyone on the Anderson side of my heritage, everyone on the Sweat Man side of my heritage, imagine, that was my mom's last name, Sweat Man. Horrific. But... I'm going to see all of them in heaven. That, I actually have heritage that I'm blood related to. But the heritage is far greater than that. We're a part of a heritage that involves the people who are recorded in Scripture. A part of our heritage are, are the Puritan guys that led to the writing of this book. I look at some of you who are a generation or two older than me, Thank you. You're creating a heritage that I'm benefiting from, that my kids are benefiting from in the family of God. You have that. Verse 6, Increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Now, Probably the person that wrote this was the king, so that's a bit interesting. <laughs> Just feels free to bless himself for a bit. But anyway, so... But all of this is to say this. If you've lost focus, if you haven't been paying attention, you can, at this very moment, call out to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to learn what is best for me. Please teach me. Lord, I want to be directed in the way I should go. Please guide me. Lord, I need you. May my life glorify you. Lord, you are worthy of all glory, honor, and praise forever. You can do that. So I'm going to ask Michaela to come up and she's going to sing a song she wrote. And what was really cool about this song is I was preparing this message. I was just at the very beginning of it. I said, do you have a song that kind of goes with this? And she's like, yeah, I have a song that's written on those two passages. Oh, sure, that's just a fluke. Pretty amazing, though. These two passages in all the Bible, and she has a song written about both of them that she wrote a long time ago. But anyway, I thought that was amazing. So, are you not paying attention in the valley? Well, it's time for a shift in your focus, a change in your attitude. Lord, you are worthy. You have redeemed me. You have delivered me from the grave. You are the rock that is higher than I. You are my refuge. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. I will ever praise your name. Now the name of this song, or what, what this song is called, is Jehovah, Jai, or Jehovah Shalom. And wanted to just read the lyrics to you. Overwhelming fullness, blissful, blessed wholeness, all this hope so true, though I can't see, your steadfast perfection, my soul's your reflection, surely this calm cannot come from me. Shelter in this battle, hope that none can rattle, 
truth, assurance, everlasting grace. When fear is demanding, you pass understanding. I am blessed and kept by your bright face. I call to remembrance my song in the night. From the ends of the earth to you I cry. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Christ is the rock that is higher than I. There we go. And let's see if it's Is this one on? Awesome. Overwhelming fullness, blissful, blessed wholeness. All this hope so true, though I can't see. Your steadfast perfection, and my soul's your reflection. For surely this calm cannot come from me. Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shalom. I will trust you, leading me home, Jehovah Shalom, God of perfect peace, Jehovah Shalom. Shelter in the battle. And hope the none can rattle Truth, assurance, everlasting grace When fear is demanding And you pass understanding I am blessed and kept by your bright face Jehovah Shalom Jehovah Shalom, God of my peace, I will trust you, leading me home. Jehovah Shalom, God of perfect peace, Jehovah Shalom. And I 
I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. And I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shalom, God of my peace, I will trust you, leading me home, Jehovah Shalom, God of perfect peace, Jehovah Shalom. Lord, I just thank you again for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you for your limitless grace. And Lord, we thank you for family. Thank you for the family of God. Thank you for all the individual families that are here this morning. Lord, we acknowledge this morning that we need you. Lord, I pray that each of us would choose you, that we would choose to submit to the truth, the truth of your word. Lord, I pray that you would renew our focus, that we would call out to you. Lord, that we would value your commands, that we would submit to the directions that you send us in. And Lord, we pray that our lives would be a testimony to your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you so much for your son Jesus, that we have a relationship with you through him. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen.